In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build great baseball workouts that are gonna be specific to your sport. They're gonna help you hit harder, run faster, throw faster, all of that good stuff. So if you're new to my channel, I'm Coach Dan Blewett. Stick around, there's gonna be a great video on baseball workouts. Okay, so first let's talk about the overview of this video. So number one, there's timestamps below. So if you wanna to jump to any certain spot, if you wanna to jump to exercises, to a different section, you'll find all that in the description below. Secondly, we're gonna talk about what are the key factors in a great baseball workout. Then we're gonna talk about all the different exercises that you'd want in your program. After that, we'll talk about how to put it together. And at the very end, I'll show you how to get my free trial of my new strength training program called Early Work, which if you want a ready-made, ready-to-go strength training workout for baseball, then with, that includes arm care, explosive drills, all this stuff, then you can try that out and see if that works for you. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build your own. All right, so let's get going. First exercise here is the front squat or the goblet squat. So if you're pretty new to strength training, the goblet squat's probably your best bet to start out. It's gonna be extremely safe. It's extremely easy if you're eight, nine, 10 years old, you can grab a 10, 15 pound dumbbell and goblet squat, it's very safe. It's, it's a great way to learn. Once you graduate and you can do 40, 50 pounds in a goblet squat, then the front squat is gonna be perfect for you. That's the progression that we would always follow in my academy. So the front squat is a great strength builder. It's super good for your core. It's, it's a more quad dominant uh, type of squatting exercise. It's very safe and very easy to learn. And it's nice because there's no bar on your back. That's what makes it extremely safe. Um, you have to learn how to ditch the bar or you need to make sure you do it in a, in a squat rack so that you can get rid of the bar forward. But because this is on the front of your body, the front squat, it forces your back to be in a safe posture. One of the, the biggest things I see with young athletes who are learning to back squat is they round their back because they have the bar on their back. Uh, with the front squat, the bar will be gone if you, were to if you were to fold over. And so the anterior position of the bar it actually forces your back to learn this what good posture is when you squat, and so it's very safe on your back from the very beginning. So if you're young, the goblet squat is going to be your first choice. If you're a little bit older and you have some training under your belt, then the front squat is going to be our squat of choice for this, this uh, baseball workout. So number two, we're going to talk about the prone L exercise. This is a great arm care, arm strengthening exercise. And in a good program, you wanna have active rest. So after you've done your set of front squats and your legs are tired, you're catching your breath, you wanna do something for active recovery, which allows you to keep working, so you're not just sitting there wasting time, you know, waiting for your next set of squats, but rather you could do something like a prone L, which is a great arm strength exercise that's then gonna be, okay, I can do this arm care stuff while I'm resting my legs, waiting for my next set of squats. So the prone L is a great external rotator exercise. It's great for the decelerators, of your throwing arm. And so that's why we would pair that with the goblet squat. After that, we're gonna do the one leg hip thrust. So the one leg hip thrust is for your glutes, for your hamstrings, for your lateral hips, because it's a one leg stabilizing exercise. This is a great one for beginners to learn hip dominant exercises that primarily target your glutes. Obviously your glutes are basically the prime movers of sprinting. They're huge in jumping and they're huge in, in hitting and throwing. Obviously pitchers have big butts, right? Sprinters tend to have big butts. That's because big glutes, AKA a big butt, helps push you down the track, down the baseline. So the one leg hip thrust is a great beginner exercise to really develop those strong glutes to help you sprint faster, jump faster, or jump higher, and hit the ball harder. So the one leg hip thrust is awesome. We're gonna pair that with a one arm dumbbell bench press. So one arm dumbbell bench press variations are great because they build a lot of shoulder stability and they're also obviously great for your pushing exercise or for your, your push. So in a good workout, you want to have push, you want to have pull exercises, so rowing, stuff like that. You want to have squatting, you want to have hip hinging, you want to have rotational uh, core strength, you want to have some core stability, you know, forearm exercises. There's a lot of different sort of categories of exercise that you want in a good baseball workout. And that being said, the one arm dumbbell bench press is a great combination for baseball players. So you could do a straight arm, you know, a straight bar bench press, but it's not gonna give you as much of that stabilizing movement for your shoulders. So when you do a one arm dumbbell bench, you're gonna get more shoulder stability built in to another great, to an already great pushing exercise. So it's a variation that I like a lot. 
my uh, strength coach friend, Andrew Sachs, likes a lot. So we wanted to include that because it's really, I wouldn't say it's baseball specific because it's not. It's a pressing exercise. It could be just as good for a, a basketball player or a football player, but it's really good for a baseball player's shoulders. After that, we're going to do the med ball shot put with a crow hop. So obviously throwing medicine balls is a great way to increase your rotational power, which is going to help you throw harder, hit harder, all that stuff, right? So no good baseball workout is complete without some rotational explosive exercises. So we want to include one of those in here. So the med ball shot put is great and adding the crow hop just, you know, gets your footwork into it and makes it a little more baseball specific, quote unquote, even though I don't want you to get obsessed with baseball specificity because in your workout, most of your exercises are going to be very similar to that of a football player or a basketball player. It's only like the 20% of your workout that makes it baseball specific. So this is something we would put in a baseball player's workout that we probably wouldn't put in a basketball player's workout because they don't really rotate that much in basketball. So you could definitely call a medicine ball throw uh, where you're rotating and doing a shot put more of like a baseball specific exercise. Same thing with the prone L, which was the arm strength exercise that we put in here that you might not put in like a swimmer's program or a you know, a soccer player's program, for example. So baseball specificity is important, but just don't get too caught up in it because most exercises will not be specific. About 80% of them won't, and only about 20% of them will, but that's what a good program looks like for baseball. After that, we're gonna pair that with the, with the chest supported row. So this is an easy exercise to do. You lay face down in a bench, you grab a pair of dumbbells, and having your chest supported allows you to do a little bit more weight and it's gonna actually, when you incline that bench a little bit, it's gonna target more of your mid to lower back, which is good. So you're gonna get some scap depression and you're gonna really strengthen your lats in the middle of your back, which is important for stamina on the mound, stamina behind the plate, stamina playing shortstop, stamina hitting, uh, all that stuff. Having a, a really strong back is like the foundation of your house. Strong lower half and a strong back is the foundation of all really great athletes. So. Chest supported row is a very easy, very safe rowing exercise that's great for, for athletes of all ages. After that, the last exercise we're going to put in this workout is the farmer's walk. So the farmer's walk is a great whole body exercise, but I'd say it's most targeted for the forearms. So you're carrying heavy weights. You're just walking with them. It's honestly one of the simplest exercises possible, but you do want to maintain good posture, keep your chest up, and you want to challenge yourself. So you want to have a really, really heavy weight that you can probably only carry for about 40 yards at most before you have to put it down. Sometimes it's only 20, 30 yards. But having really strong forearms is important because your forearm muscles help protect your UCL and your elbow, your ulnar collateral ligament. You can see I've had Tommy John surgery here before. But having strong forearms is critical for helping to keep that joint stable and your forearm muscles sort of act as like the like the, the bodyguards for your ulnar collateral ligaments. So you definitely want to have strong forearms. And you also want to have a lot of stamina in your forearms. Because again, you're not just going to throw one pitch. You're going to throw 100 pitches in a game, right? So having stamina, having strong forearms is really important. Obviously, when you're carrying heavy weights, everything else in your chain gets strong too. So you're, you're holding, you know, 80-pound dumbbells in each hand your legs have to support that weight. So you're getting some hip stability, you're getting some core stability while you're walking, your, your posture, your shoulders, your back, everything, all that weight is flowing through your whole body. So the farmer's walk is a, it's, it's a great mental toughness exercise. It's a great overall body strength exercise, but it's also really great for the forearms. Okay, so now that we've got all the exercises for our baseball workouts, let's go through and sort of pair them together and make this into an actual workout. So the first ones we talked about were the goblet squat or the front squat, and we're going to pair that with the prone L, which I mentioned we'd pair those two as a superset. So you'd do a front squat, then a prone L, a front squat, then a prone L, a goblet squat, then a prone L if you're doing goblet squats. You go back and forth between the two alternating, so you're doing one, which is using different muscles than the other, as rest for each other. So I'd recommend four sets of eight front squats, or four sets of 12 goblet squats if you're doing goblet squats, paired with three sets of uh, 12 to 15 prone L's, and so you'll finish on your last set of front squats. That's a great way to pair those two exercises together. The next two are the one leg hip thrust and the one arm dumbbell bench press. So you'll alternate these two again, just the same as a superset. So I would do one set of 10 for each leg, one leg hip thrusts, and then I would do one set of eight to 10 for each arm on the one leg or the one arm dumbbell bench press. 
alternate back and forth until you've done three sets of each exercise. After that, we're gonna do the med ball shot put with crow hop, and we're gonna alternate that in, its, in a superset with the chest supported row. So your core is gonna get some rest while you're doing your chest supported row, and then vice versa. So I would do sets of six to eight medicine ball throws, and then I would do sets of eh, somewhere between eight and 12 chest supported rows, alternate back and forth of each until you've done four sets of medicine ball throws and three sets or four sets of chest supported rows. And then to finish, I would do all your farmer's walks at the end. If you have a buddy who wants to do them with you, you can kind of alternate, but I would bang out three or four sets of 40 yards per carry. So you want to wait, you can hopefully keep the, the weights in your hands without dropping them for about 40 yards. Then when you have to sit them down, you'll probably need to rest for 90 seconds, two minutes, something like that, then pick them up and go again. These are good cardiovascular exercises too. The farmer's walk will get definitely get your heart rate up. It's, it's kind of conditioning as well. So, you know, you can grab a drink, catch your breath, give yourself 90 seconds, two minutes, and then do your next set of farmer's walks. And don't be surprised if you can just make it for 40 yards on the first carry, you might start to fall short in the next and the next because you get a little bit tired in your forearms, but completely normal. So just give it your best. It's, like I said, it's a great mental toughness builder in addition to a great overall body strength and forearm builder. All right, so there you have it. This is a good whole body balanced baseball workout that's specific for, you know, position players, pitchers, either one. Obviously, you want to always, you know, be careful, work on great technique, have a supervisor, a strength coach, someone there to help you with good form, be really safe, make sure you understand the weight room. So don't just grab this and just jump in. Make sure you have someone there to supervise you and help you through your workout. But again, having a baseball specific workout is really, really important. And again, it's only that last 20%, adding in some arm care, adding in some rotational core work, some core stability work, some lateral hip work, which we didn't cover in this video. Uh, all those things kind of make a workout baseball specific, all right? So thanks for watching. If you want your own baseball workout that's made for you, ready to go with arm care, explosive exercises, help you get bigger, stronger, faster, Check out the early work program. You can get a free trial in the video below. All the links that you need are in the description. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe, share this with a friend, and I'll see you here in the next video.